This is Courtney Kardashian's home office from a previous edition of Architectural Digest. And while everything in the picture seems like it belongs there, there's a piece of furniture here that probably doesn't. Because not too long ago, in the humble city of Chandigarh, these chairs were as valuable as trash. This is a video about this chair and how it went from some of the most humble offices in Chandigarh to some of the most elitist homes today. You're watching The Breakdown. Welcome to the episode about the famous Chandigarh chairs. Long years ago, we made a trip with destiny at the stroke of the midnight hour. When the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. In August of 1947, India declared its independence to the world. But shadowing this event was the biggest mass migration that the world had ever witnessed. Millions lost their homes, their families, their heritage in a matter of days. And you don't have to look further than the state of Punjab, which was nearly ripped in half. The people were scarred and Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India, wanted a fresh start for the people of Punjab. He wanted to build a new capital for the state that embodied the new secular India. And for that, he chose the humble city of Chandigarh. Before the 1950s, Chandigarh was a very unassuming place. Mr. Nehru recently went to the Punjab to inaugurate the new capital at Chandigarh, some 60 miles from Simla. It had good resources, it had good connectivity with Delhi, it had the people, it had the land. It was an ideal place if you wanted to start designing a capital from scratch. Now the task was to find the right person for the job, and not just someone who understood the modern design, but somebody who helped revolutionize it. I am Keerti Dudeja. I'm an interior architect practicing in branding, interior design and product design as per the projects. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Michael. Hello. Hello. Sorry for this interruption. Uh, if you did not really understand, uh, this is my friend Kirti. She designed the city of Chandigarh. What? She no. She did not design the city. Maybe she did design the city. No, she did not design. This interruption is not about her. This interruption is because of uh, this mic. See, the only thing that this was supposed to do when I was interviewing Kirti was to record good audio, and it failed to do that. And see, nobody likes it when someone breaks your trust, especially when you paid for it. Sorry for the bad audio. I hope that makes up for it. We now join our regularly scheduled program already in progress. I am Keerti Dudeja. I'm an interior architect practicing in branding, interior design and product design as per the projects. Jawaharlal Nehru, he wanted this new established society to be face of modern India because we were coming out uh, from the colonial rule of the British. He commissions these two architects to come on ground and help us develop a new city. One of them unfortunately passed away and then this project was then commissioned to Le Corbusier. Corbusier was already a big deal in, in the field of design. An integral component of the Bauhaus movement in the post-war world, he was the ideal man for building a modern city for the new India. And more importantly, Nehru really valued his opinion. While the work on the layout of the city and the exterior architecture of these modern buildings was in full flow, Le Corbusier wanted someone to lead the interior design. And for that, he appointed one of his colleagues. And his name was Pierre Jean Ray, another titan of modernism. So along with this uh, huge urban planning of the city and then architecture, it was also required for these architects to develop the furniture which would be used by the administrative buildings and the official buildings of the city, which gave birth to a lot of important furniture that you would see around from those times which still hold a lot of importance in 2022 as well. Including the famous Chandigarh chairs. 
अभी तो हमने बात करनी शुरू ही नहीं करी इस बारे में <laughs> Why is Chandigarh chair such a landmark in like furniture design? Why is it so famous, especially in today's age? I think it's a, such a million-dollar question that you have asked with so much confusion that is airing around this. Although there were many versions of the furniture made, because as I said, it was made for an institution, administrative building. So there can't be just one chair for Chandigarh. But ones that got really famous is one of these with inverted V legs. And solid wood structure, certain kind of joinery, natural cane woven for backrest and seat, which gives it a bit of tension that it makes you feel that it adjusts to each one that uses it, right? While designing the chair, Jean Ray and his team had a very peculiar task at hand. The chair not only had to look like it belonged there, but it also had to serve its purpose ergonomically, at the same time being cheap and easy to mass produce and repair. You see the cane if it were to wear out eventually. the restoration of it for the next person to sit on it would be cheaper it does address to the two problems or two targets that it needs to is to for the person to sit for it to last longer and in case of some restoration it's cheaper restoration so that addresses to the mass production and the mass need of it it seems like jean ray and his team had actually done it with this design because it served everything that it set out to do what i don't understand then and what further enhances the dilemma is then how did it end up with these recyclers and in the trash and more than that a decade or two later how did it end up in some of the most affluent houses in the world and to understand that we need to go back in time the 60s and 70s weren't really kind to chandigarh because it was going through a lot haryana was separated from punjab and now chandigarh was the shared capital of haryana and punjab even though in itself it was a union territory that kind of started a downfall in 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 a lot of sense in political sense and economical sense and there are a lot of disputes between punjab and haryana which are still not settled even today so the city sort of went through like a existential crisis of sort what do you do when you go through an existential crisis you look for change after the beautiful city is established and after this furniture has been used for its very function government realized that people realize that they don't need it anymore people do grow out of uh, purani cheeze in india a lot especially with furniture and designer objects or clothes we don't take it as heritage to be passed on to next generation as in the western europe for example we call it it's old and i want something new so it lands into a lot of warehouses and stores now the government could sell these chairs to recyclers at a, at a cheap price for being used as firewood or they could find someone who was interested in these designs and sell them at a slightly higher price and miraculously there was a group of art collectors from europe which were very very interested in these well at least 40 of these 40 of which are picked up by the art collectors from the western world now all this hype you know how world functions you know if 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 you have this and i can't have this i would rather want it more so when i started picking up in the west it took over the world and there was in the news that you would see it in the famous celebrity houses in the us as well i mean it's a bit difficult to fathom because these chairs were just produced very cheaply and now they're being sold at exorbitant prices now to make things clear these collectors weren't just flipping these chairs at higher prices they put in those those much effort to restore it first of all rebrand it recognize the value of it coming from their part of the world and started constructing a narrative around it the narrative that kirti is talking about in this is is rather interesting you see in the west where these chairs are like mostly sought after the narrative is not so much around it being the chandigarh chairs but it being the genre chairs now this perspective is highly contested and fairly so but if you would like to go further just for the sake of discussion it begs the question did it really serve its purpose of being the symbol of the new free india because now when it has garnered a li- like european ownership have we just extended or furthered the impact of colonialism through this chess it's a rather interesting topic other side of this narrative is that this chair belongs as much to jean ray as it does to the city of chandigarh because it was he and his team that were responsible for the design of this chess So is it blatantly wrong to award ownership to Jean Ray or are we asking the wrong questions in the first place See I think the bigger point here is I don't want to divide it into, under the name of Indian architect or a French artist or a French designer or the nationality life cycle of the product from its start to end and after life of that product can be only so much perceived it might just change its trajectory over its period of 
and course of use and after use and how it's disposed of and what happens after it's disposed of now you could project that but you can't be very certain about how it's going to be let alone when you die what happens to that trajectory is another very broad uh, aspect to comment on world changes world evolves now somebody saw another kind of value after the end cycle of that product so it's the rebirth of the product now the rebirth have been taken into another trajectory is just i don't know why is it a debate if it was perceived and started as a democratic product in the beginning and then later on it it took its course in a second life as now a celebrated object it's only for the world to decide and the buyers and that market who functions around it i kind of like attaching stories to objects it it kind of gives them a life for me it makes them of value and this chair is is just it's a journey of the city of chandigarh every time that i look at this chair i'm filled with a lot of emotions i'm filled with the new hope that it once stood for i'm filled with the opportunity that it embodies because it 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 really did have a second life and i'm overwhelmed by just how important design could be in just changing the way you look at the world in my understanding design is an answer to a problem it's a solution if you can understand the depth of it it is i have a need to sit answer could be one of the answers could be a chair with four legs now when you approach it with that approach you can design a chair you can design a sofa you can design a chair with two legs you can design a chair with four legs if you approach it from that direction then design is limitless and cannot be defined if it just boils down to it's just a solution to a problem best the oh yeah Thank you so much for watching the video until the very end. This has been a topic that has been a long time coming, <laughs> but the thing is that I'm right now in Delhi. Actually, this is my last day in Delhi, back home, and I'm leaving tomorrow. And it's been a very difficult but important trip. Uh, personally, I wasn't able to meet a lot of people. That still bugs me. Uh, but I did meet a lot of people as well, and I did a lot of collaborations with them. Kirti obviously being amongst those sometimes you know just you just meet someone and you just feel that they are destined to do something big in their life she does have that aura so i would really urge you in fact i would insist to you with everything that i have to go and check her work out this is her website you can check her out there and you know just reach out to her tell her that we sent you there <laughs> I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Kirti, if you're watching this, I'm incredibly thankful. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. And it was an insane amount of fun just like shooting the video with you and then hanging out. And yeah, if you've watched this video until this very end, please please do let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Um uh, yeah. I'll see you in the next one.